Welcome to another research review. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders with HBOT USA. Today we're going to talk about hyperbaric oxygen as it relates to fighting infection. And so hyperbaric oxygen has a multitude of effects and benefits on our immune system. I want to talk about all of them. Some of them are much more specific to infection fighting, but just since we're doing a video on infection and the immune system, I want to make sure those listening have a pretty good idea of the, the variety of effects that it will ultimately have on the immune system as a whole. So hyperbaric oxygen has the ability to one, reduce inflammation. And so inflammation is our immune system at work. And so hyperbaric oxygen often has the ability to reduce inflammation by reducing the uh, cytokine cascade that typically occurs. Now, in some cases, we're going to want to do that, and in other cases, we're not going to want to do that. I'll talk about that more in a minute. The other effects that it has is that hyperbaric oxygen has a tendency to create a better balance of the bacteria in our body. And how does it do that? Well, the, the probiotic, the good bacteria that live in our body, they are typically either aerobic, meaning they love oxygen, or they're at least oxygen tolerant. While anaerobes, which are bugs that don't like oxygen or live in low oxygen environments, uh, most, most of the pathogens, the bad guys in us, they're mostly air anaerobic. And so as our body is exposed to this hyperbaric oxygen environment, it starts to shift the bacteria and the molds that all live in and on us into a direction where we're creating an environment that's very conducive to aerobes to thrive and live and be well, while also creating an environment for these anaerobes that makes it much more difficult for them to, to thrive or to live in, and in some cases can help kill them. Which is one of the reasons we use hyperbaric oxygen, even traditional medicine, for things like gangrene. Because these anaerobic infections, uh, again, don't tolerate this oxygen environment. In addition to this, hyperbaric oxygen also has the ability to energize our white blood cells. And so we get activation primarily of neutrophils and macrophages, but ultimately it can create activation of our entire immune system. And so as our body is exposed to these higher levels of oxygen, it allows our cells to make the ATP or the cellular energy that they need to make in order to continue to fight. And so sometimes when, it, when an infection might be mild and in its very acute form, our white blood cells should have enough energy to fight that infection, sometimes the infection might be very strong or sometimes that fight may go on for longer periods of time. And so increasing the level of oxygen that our body is exposed to, which allows our cells to have an increased amount of oxygen to create cellular energy, allows us to fight that fight uh, longer and stronger. Another effect of hyperbaric oxygen is going to be the oxidative uh, component of hyperbaric. And so in that oxidative component, it allows our cells, specifically our white blood cells, to use ROS or reactive oxygen species, which is one of the tools that our body is going to use to literally spray on infections to kill them. And so as, as our body is exposed to this extra oxygen and some of that extra, extra oxygen becomes oxidative, it allows this increase in ROS that our white blood cells are able to use to fight that infection. Lastly, hyperbaric oxygen is shown to reduce viral loads. And so by a few different mechanisms, this increased oxygen and possibly the increased pressure um, actually helps to reduce uh, viral loads that are measured in people's systems. And so um, going back to the first thing I said with uh, how it reduces inflammation, in certain cases when we're getting an, an infection, um, we want that typical cytokine response. The initial re response to a pathogen or an infection of any kind is often met with some increased amount of inflammation and that's a normal healthy response. And so we want that response from our body to any invader coming in. And so if we were going to use hyperbaric oxygen for an infection, it's typically not within the first few days because we really want to allow that cytokine cascade to really do its thing. Beyond the first few days, either the system, our immune system, could start losing steam and so it might need extra energy to fight the fight, and or the inflammatory response could also start getting in our way of healing. And so after those initial first few days, increasing the oxygen in our body should allow for a much stronger immune response and to keep the balance of inflammation uh, to anti-inflammation 
uh, much more neutralized so that our body could continue to fight the infection and at the same time continue to increase the healing response that our, that our tissues are going to need for a full recovery. So I hope that helps. I will link a few studies below describing the mechanisms by which those uh, benefits and effects are seen in hyperbaric oxygen as it relates to our immune system. And as always, if you uh, like the content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. And in the comments, please let us know if there are specific topics you'd like to hear. I'm happy to make a video on it. We'll talk to you soon. Till next time.